Hello, Joe Neville here. So AOS 8.7 is out now, and this is an important release I've been waiting a long time for because of the amount of new IPv6 features. In this video, I'm going to be building an Aruba WLAN, but on a V6 only network. So uh, grab your cup of coffee. I've got my um, lucky airhead cap. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it does need a wash. I've been wearing it a lot and I've been cutting my own hair recently, which I'm sure some of you have also had to resort to. Uh, so uh, let's get on with the video. Here's the network I'm going to build then, starting with the Mobility Master, which is running AOS 8.7, of course. I've got a couple of hardware controllers. These are 7005s. I'm going to be putting them into a cluster and they'll be running VRRP. Just the single AP for this demo setup, I've got a UAP 303HR. And the nice thing about a UAP is that if it boots up and it doesn't hear from a controller, it can happily join the network and act as an Aruba instant AP. But if it does hear from a controller, which we hope it will do in our case, it will transition to becoming a campus AP, which is managed by the controllers. And then for the default gateway, I've got an Aruba AOS CX 6300, and everything mentioned thus far sits on VLAN 800, and the subnet is 2001 DB8 800. It's a slash 64, of course. And in addition, I have this server subnet here, which is VLAN 87, 2001 DB8 87 slash 64. And I need that because I need a DNS server. So you can run any DNS server. I'm running Windows 2019. Here are some notes about this network. This network is going to be Slack only. There is no IPv4. There is no DHCP v6 required for this. So we don't need DHCP v6 for the AP to discover its controllers. The sequence that is going to happen on the network when we first boot is that the gateway will send a router advertisement with the recursive DNS server information and the DNS search list. That's the information that's covered by RFC 8106. The AP will receive the RA because it's a slash 64, everything's default, so the A flag will be set. The AP will be able to generate its own globally routable address. It will also pick up the information, so the RDNSS and the DNSSL, and it will use that to send a query to the DNS server for aruba-master dot zone 87 dot home the dns server so i will have already have created a quad a for that and the dns server will return the ip address which will be the vrrp address for the 7005s and then the ap will build a tunnel to the controllers let's dive right in then and the first task i'm going to tackle is building the mobility master for information about this, we can turn to the installation guide for AOS 8.7. It's a virtual appliance and it gives you details for the various hypervisors. So we've got ESXi, we've got KVM, and I'm going to build this on my Windows 2019, which I use for my Hyper-V server. And the thing that I noticed is in the details here for the installation, there's some PowerShell. So there's some steps there that are required for building the trunk ports. And also it's a lot quicker to build this, well, to build any VM in PowerShell rather than using the GUI. So that's what I've done. Here's my Windows 2019 server, which I'm using as my Hyper-V server. And what I've done is I've taken the information out of the installation guide and I've created this PowerShell script, which I can run to build the VM for the Mobility Master. Now, I'm not a PowerShell expert by any means, which any of you that are will notice from what I've done here. But, uh, you know, it's just some simple steps which do really speed up the process. And one of the things with this is that the steps that you require are not all available in the GUI. So those trunk ports. I'll run through what I'm doing here. I have my variables so to make this more transferable. So I've got a VM name, I've got an image and the VM switch. I import that from a JSON file that uh, sits locally and then create some variables from that. I create a new VM, I set up the CPU, the startup RAM. I've got a couple of disks. All of the information and all of the details for this is coming out of the installation guide. Then I've got three network adapters and I'm doing something 
a little bit extra with one of the adapters because I'm adding it to my V switch and then I start the VM. Let's run that. So I believe it's local. Yes, so there we are. Run that and we should see some messages appear. Yes, about the virtual disk creation and in the GUI, we'll be able to see it booting up here and then start VM. So it's running, should be able to bring that up. There we are. Okay. That's installing now. Okay, off it goes. And there'll be a message to say that we need to eject the media. Reset. Okay, there it is. Please remove at the bottom there. Please remove the installation media. So I go up here and eject the ISO. Now we're resetting. This takes a while, so I'll jump ahead because this is just the simple installation process until we have the prompt, which means that I can start configuring my Mobility Master. That's now finished installing, so I can now go through the setup dialog. First of all, it is the system name. Give it the same name that I've given the VM, the controller VLAN. I'm gonna go 800. Yep, that's the correct port. It will be a trunk, native VLAN of one. Now this is new for 8.7 because previously 8.6 and before you had to configure a v4 address. It was necessary for the build. There was no getting away with it. Even if you just put a dummy one, you had to put one in. Now we've got this option. We are going to go for no and then v6 defaults to yes. So I'll configure my mobility master's address. That's going to be 20. Slash 64, yep, yeah, default gateway, 800, colon, colon, one. And that's my DNS server. Country code, Great Britain, yes. So it's Europe. Okay, okay. Password. Do I wish to accept those? Yes, please. Okay, so it goes for another reboot and then we'll be able to log in. Hopefully we'll be able to log in via the web interface. Now I've got access. The next task is to add the licenses to this mobility master. I'll do that off camera because that's standard across different versions of AOS is an 8.7 specific. After that, I'll be tackling configuring my controllers. With my Mobility Master up, now I'm going to move on to my controllers. So what I've done is I've already loaded in the new version of code for the controller, and I've done a write arrays on the 7005. It's booted up, so I'm now at the startup dialog. I'm going to go for the full setup, give it a name, manage device. Now this is important, we've got the choice for the IPsec tunnel, whether it's going to be V4 or V6, of course we're going for IPv6. This is the address of my mobility master. Again, an option to configure v4 here. So do I want to configure a v4 address? No. And there's a lot of defaults I have to select now. So VPN concentrator, no. No. Is the master switch a virtual mobility master? Yes. Here is the key that we are going to use. Enter that again for the IPsec tunnel. No. Uplink is going to be 800, going to be a trunk, native is one, V6 is going to be static, so this is the local address, it's going to be 30, 64, default gateway, so one, DNS, 
Do you wish to configure a V4 address on the VLAN? No, we do not. Uh, dynamic port channel, no. Country code again. So this is similar to the Mobility Master. Okay, yeah. Admin account. And that looks good to me. Okay, so that now will go off and restart. And I need to do this for my other 7005 as well. I'll get on with that while this is reloading and jump forward. Now I've configured both of my controllers via the console. I'm going to SSH into them. So a show version 8.7 is running and I'm also going to, this is a bit of a shortcut, grab the MAC address using show switch info and then I'll record the MAC address so that I can add it into the Mobility Master. And the Mobility Master is where I am going to head now. Back on my Mobility Master, I need to add my controllers in. We'll go to configuration controllers, hit the plus sign. I'm going to use an IP set key and to the address of the controller there. Submit. So that's one. So we don't have to add in a V4 address anymore, of course. Push that out. I'm going to create a network here. Well, a group, I'll call it zone 87. Add my controllers in there. And grabbing the MAC address off of the controllers saved me a bit of time here. Now I'm just waiting for the controllers to connect to the Mobility Master. I can see that one has already. And now I'm waiting for the second. Ah, that's just come in. There they both are. Status is up, looking good. Now to create the cluster, I'll go to zone 87, configuration. I'm going to give the cluster a name, so I'll call it uh, zone 87-C, hit the plus sign. IP version is version six, of course. And then we select the IP address. Leave the rest as blanks, fine. V6 again, and it's colon colon 31. Okay, that. Hit submit. And push out those pending changes. And then I need to go to each individual controller, services cluster, and add them into the cluster. Pending change, deploy that. Go to the next one. And then we can check that on the CLI of one of my controllers, LC cluster group membership. Okay, so L2 connected with the peer, that's good. All I'm doing here is copying what I've learned from my colleague John's 8.2 video series. So if you want a lot more detail from an expert, hit the link showing now. That's the clustering. Now we're going to move on to the VRRP. So I'll select one of the controllers, go to redundancy, L2 redundancy, add, give it an ID, V6, give it an address. I was going to go with A3. Now this one I'm going to give the priority to preempt and up the VLAN is going to be 800. And I think that's it. Submit that. Okay, you get this invalid warning, but uh, I think that's that's fine. That's known. And we'll add it in here on the second one. Okay, it won't 
add a priority up 800 submit that go for the pending change yeah that's just a cosmetic issue with this release okay logging into the CLI for both let's do a show VRRP and this threw me the first time I looked because there's a separate command for IPv6 I thought I hadn't configured VRRP when I first did this because I was just looking at the V4, but there we are. Uh, we've got VRRP, IPv6, we've got the master over here, and we've got the backup. Dash 2 is the backup. Now we've created the clustering and we've created VRRP for IPv6. At this stage, to save a bit of time, what I like to do is to create essentially a test WLAN. So we'll add one in so that when the AP does come up, uh, we can easily see that everything is successful. Uh, let us, what's the VLAN? VLAN 800, and I'm gonna go, this is just personal, WPA2 personal. I'll put in a passphrase, next authenticated okay and we'll deploy that and the final point of interest I believe before we get the AP to boot is the configuration on the default gateway because this is really important in dictating how the AP is going to receive its address yeah, the information about the DNS server and the search list so it can send that a Aruba dash master and a fully qualified query for the controller address. Now here I am on the command line interface of my default gateway. It's a 6300. Let's have a look at the configuration. There's a lot on here, uh, which I haven't tidied up, but the really important points are this. So it's VLAN 800. Okay, this is the essentially the layer three interface, and this has all of the important points that we require. Of course, being the default gateway, we've got that slash 64. By default, that's going to be sent out with an A flag. So uh, clients that receive this will be able to generate their own globally routable addresses. And now here's a couple of important points, actually. So what I've done here is I've reduced the minimum interval and the maximum interval of an RA. That I, what I found there, so the minimum being 30 seconds, the maximum being 60, um, the defaults are quite high with this. I think the maximum is 10 minutes actually. So I've reduced that down because that does speed things up when you, the AP is booting. It can significantly uh, speed up the boot time actually. Um, now the next two lines this is for the rfc 8106 so it's a bit of a clunky uh, command essentially by default the ra will not send the search list and the r dns s information so what you're saying is it's a double negative essentially um, so don't suppress the dns sl and don't suppress the r dns s information that's a really easy thing to get wrong here uh, in, the, in the commands. So do remember that point if you're going for Slack only. Uh, no DHCP v6 here. Now, so of course then, it's really important that we do have the required information and those are the next two lines. So the search list there, the zone 87.home and then the DNS service of the R, DNSS information, 2001 DB8, 87 colon colon 10 and that is my windows dns server it doesn't have to be windows of course and that's the information that you need for an ap to learn its address and the rdns and the search list via an ra no dhcp v6 and just for the sake of completeness the final thing that i want to show before we factory default the ap and get it to boot is the dns so the quad a this is my windows dns server if we're going into zone 87 there we have aruba dash master and it is 2001 db8 800 a3 so i've statically configured that there 
This is the home straight then. I've added the console in on the left here so that I've got something to see when the AP is booting. Over on the right is my mobility master. So I'm looking for my access point to appear and everything to be green and good. I'm just going to press the factory default button. Okay, and that is now booting. Okay, and you can see configuration reset requested by user. Now this will take quite a long time. Uh, it's over half an hour sometimes for this initial boot from a factory default. So I've jumped forward and my AP has booted. You can see the IP address of it over here. And over on my mobility master, we can see my access point is up. Here we are, the access points up. It's my 303H. And I can hopefully join this network. So let's try that. And on my terminal, if I do an IF config, there we go. I have a couple of IP addresses. So uh, from Slack, I've this is MacOS, I've generated two IP addresses. Okay, so that's it for this video. You watch me build an Aruba AOS 8.7 V6 only network. We built the Mobility Master, the two hardware controllers. I showed you the config on my AOS CX 6300 default gateway. I showed you the Quad A on the Windows server. The AP booted, it discovered its controllers, by using the DNS query to Aruba master, was able to build the IPsec tunnel to the controllers, started broadcasting the WLAN, and I was able to join my MacBook to that and receive IP addresses. No V4, no DHCP V6, Slack only. So in the next video, I'm gonna take it a step further because this was just open, and I'm going to introduce security. And the way that I can do that is because ClearPass 6.9 runs in a v6 only network. So we can introduce EAP TLS for our clients without any v4 in sight. So join me for that video, please. I'll be posting that as soon as I've made it. Please do like, comment, subscribe, all of those good things. But that's it for this video. My name is Joe Neville. Thank you and goodbye.